Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I am interviewing Erica, and you are going to love this episode. She was a young mom that made a very bold decision early on, which turned into an incredible entrepreneurial journey. I think you'll really enjoy listening to the twists and turns and how it has impacted not only her children, but her belief in herself. Enjoy. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. I'm excited to say that I have a sponsor for this episode. It's 1000springsmill.com and it's 1000. <laughs> and I'm thrilled that they have decided to sponsor the episode because I've been shopping with them for a long time. They are non GMO, they are organic, and they're regenerative farmers. So they love the land and they take care of the land. And I feel like that takes care of my family. Um, I'm very specific about the things that I bring into my home. And they have some amazing products. So check out their website and definitely sign sign up for their newsletter because they have some incredible recipes that they email out. Again, that's a thousand springsmill.com. Erica, we're finally doing this. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to just introduce you a little bit and then we're going to dive into your story. So I'm grateful that you flew all the way out here to record with me and um, I will just say that you have an incredible agency, digital agency, that we'll hear a little bit about. You work with a lot of professional athletes, business owners. So let's go all the way back and start with you as young Erica before you became entrepreneurial Erica. And let's talk about your journey, okay? So I want to talk about the mom piece. Okay. So you were a young mom. Very young. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about that. So I had my daughter when I was 17. And at the time, of course, I was in 11th grade in high school and felt like sort of the end of my life. Um, but one vow that I made when she was born was that she would never be a statistic, I would never become a statistic, and that she would be afforded every opportunity in life. And you made the decision. Yeah. And what did that look like? Because I think that, you know, those that are listening, and you're probably going to inspire a lot of young moms, because I do think that we go somewhere mentally when something really big like that happens. But what did it look like actually making that the case? And I'll say your daughter is amazing, just graduated, incredible human, insanely intelligent like her mom, and has had an incredible life. So what did it look like creating that? I think that creating it, like you said, the decision was by far the biggest thing. Um, Figuring it out took a little bit of time, but for me, it was just always staying focused that she was the first priority, but also the motivation behind everything that I did. And so I made most of my decisions in life based on, obviously far from perfect, but based on what would be best for her. And I think that that just really carried through. And I think it really helped her too, because she is uh, so amazing. And I think that it was because she watched her mom, you know, overcome a lot. And so in practice, that looked like a lot of hard work and being adaptable. Like when something wasn't working, pivoting. Every decision you make isn't the right decision. You don't just figure it out because you've made a decision. And so being able to pivot when things aren't working. 
So coming out of high school, did you go to college? Where did you go from there? So when I first came out of high school, I was working. I actually started working at a young age before I even had my daughter. I was a gymnast, and so I coached gymnastics. Um, I had an injury that didn't allow me to continue in gymnastics. So I started coaching gymnastics when I was about 16. I was actually coaching girls that were older than me, ironically. And um, coming out of high school, I worked and thought that I wanted to pursue beauty and decided to go to cosmetology school because it was shorter and quicker, um, but quickly realized that probably wasn't what I wanted to be stuck doing for the rest of my life necessarily. Like I enjoyed it, but like when I wanted to enjoy it. And um, I joined the military. So I joined the military during the height of the Iraq war. And it was an incredible experience. Also very difficult as a mom because I had never been away from my daughter and like for I think more than a day and went to boot camp, right? For two months, I didn't see her. And um, it was just an amazing experience. When I got out of the military, I did go to school and, um, and for finance and marketing and then started working in corporate. And I did that for a long time. But I realized, you know, several years into it, that I was working for people who put really unrealistic pressure when you have responsibilities outside of work and also didn't value the same things that I valued. Like, it was a huge issue if I had to take time off, you know, for one of my kids. And for me, that was a huge, huge issue. So that was really sort of my transition to like, this is not what's meant for me. Right. And so is that when you started your own business or did you do it at the same time? So there was a little overlap um, throughout my life because I didn't have financial help with my kids. I always had like, I guess what you would call side hustles, like just different things I would do for a period of time and make additional money. And so towards the end of working at corporate, I started like a side creative business and it was slow to start, but as soon as I saw promise, I just took the plunge. There was a situation with my daughter's school where I had to leave work early one day and my boss like really gave me a hard time about it. And it was like a, like a school threat situation. And so I was like panicked and left. Right. And, um, I, that day I was like, no, like I'm not going to keep living like this because my kids are obviously my first priority, but they need to be provided for too, right? So as soon as I saw a promise, I took the plunge. I left corporate, but I was freelancing. I definitely didn't start my agency right away because it's a huge difference, even if you've managed a department or a team in corporate to go to owning your own business because you don't really have like that structure that was already in the corporate world or SOPs and so many things. So I freelanced and I did that for a couple of years. And then I, again, back to like the beauty thing, I opened a lash bar in Philadelphia about a year and a half before COVID. And it was amazing because I was like really my own boss. I was still doing the creative stuff outside, but it was so time consuming. Like, yes, I could be like, okay, I can't come to work today. But that also meant that I just like didn't make money that day. Right. <laughs> so uh, when we had to close for COVID, that was kind of an excuse. I didn't reopen it after. And during that time, I really went all in with the creative and the marketing. I was designing at the time sports uniforms for colleges and universities. Um, I had linked with a manufacturer, and so that was really amazing. And then I had, through that connection, I had an NFL player who was like, he grew up in Philadelphia and needed web design, which I had never done. And um, the manufacturer was like, oh, I have somebody I think can do it. And I was like, you know what? I think I can do it. I can do it. Like, we can do it. You know, and he wasn't a huge name at the time. And still our client now, which is really amazing because we've been able to be there with him during his, you know, kind growth. of career and yeah. growth. But in that, just really realizing, like, my own capabilities, because I think it's a big difference, right, when you have somebody who is, like, 
like when you work in corporate and you have like a boss or other coworkers, it's like, yeah, I, I'm capable, like, but in this thing. Yeah. And, you know, we all get that like imposter syndrome of like, well, can I do everything? Can I do all the things? And so I think that really like boosted my confidence. I also was surrounded by some really amazing people who believed in me. And so I built my agency and now we basically went from it being me freelancing to about 10 employees. We have over like 120-ish regular clients and it's fantastic. I can afford the time to do stuff like this instead of being <laughs> tied to a desk 24-7. So it's been really amazing. And take your daughter to LA for a week and all oh, kinds of things. Yes, all yeah. kinds of things. We did go to LA for her 21st birthday. But it's interesting. I, I love the journey because I think sometimes people see someone that's at your success level and they think it was like a straight path. Absolutely not. <laughs> and so hearing your journey and all of the twists and even you not being sure, but that creative piece is actually what really led you into the big success that you have with your agency. So mm -hmm. imagine if you hadn't just said, yes, I'm just going to do it. I don't know. It's such a cool story to me in that way, because you decided to believe in yourself in times where there wasn't really any indication that you should, right? For sure. I was definitely, so I have a family who's very supportive, but they're very old school, right? Yeah. Like kind of like this mentality of like, if you don't hate your job, you're not working hard enough. And so for me, like I have been creative since I was little. Like I have like literally binders of like elementary and middle school where I like designed fashion outfits and stuff like that. But I didn't think because it was something like I enjoyed, I just never considered it as a career path, you know, as I was growing up. And now stepping into it is like phenomenal. And it's still kind of crazy, like seeing something that I created or now like that my team has created and seeing it like in Philadelphia, there's on some of the main roads are like huge signs of like logos that we've done and branding for businesses. A cup we have a couple of businesses that are like family entertainment type of centers. And so like our designs are like in their carpet, in their buildings. <laughs> and it's really amazing to see that stuff come to life. Yeah, I remember you and I were talking once and you're like, it's on a billboard right now. Like I see yeah, it. It's so cool. It's, such a it's cool so thing. cool. I still get that little bit of like shock value. Like even though I've been doing it for several years now, it's still that little bit of shock value of like seeing it in real life. So there's two pieces I want to ask you about. The first one is, so as a mom, having your children go through all of that with you, I know you already mentioned this, that you thought it's been a really great lesson for your daughter, but have there been points along the way where that has really resonated for you? Like, my daughter is watching how I'm handling this situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I really feel like it's happened so many times. Um, it's interesting because we were having a conversation, I think yesterday, like you just can't make everybody happy, right? So like our clients love us, but about a year and a half ago, we had like a really difficult client, like, and I decided n to no longer work with them. And I had never really like done that in my business, you know, had never like, mm -hmm. quote unquote, fired a client. And I remember just being very like, empathetic and compassionate, like towards the client, even though I wasn't very happy with them because my kids do, I mean, they watch so much, you know, and there's, there's always highs and lows. Like sometimes my kids are like, why are you working right now? Like, can't we just hang out? And I'm like, I just have to send three more emails. So, you know, the time freedom thing, it's, it's a balance. Like you have to figure out when to, when to take the time but the business does have to run. And I feel like, especially in the last year, and we talked about this a little bit, I've really been able to master that where I like dedicate specific time to work and specific time to my kids and just really getting out of that like hustle mentality of like, I need to work 24 seven to be successful and being more in alignment with what is most important to me. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're, you've taken that and you're mentoring other other women and other small business owners, I think that you have a huge passion around 
all of the all of the lessons that you've learned over the years going through that journey the way that you have. And Mm -hmm. you and I have talked about this a lot. There are some women in your life that just needed to hear about, you know, one thing that you learned very, very long into your journey and teaching them early on really has helped them dramatically. And so that, that piece of you giving back the way that you do, I think is really, really powerful. It is. It's it's probably my biggest passion for sure right now is spending more time building a community for moms, of course, who want to own their own business or currently have a side hustle or a business, but they haven't really figured out how to scale it and have like time and financial freedom, right? Because the foundations of business are really the same no matter what business it is. And I think that's huge because I realized about... I think you and I might have spoken like in January. So it was probably like the month before that. So maybe like six months ago, I had a moment of like feeling, you know, the excitement of, and like the pride of like where I am now, but thinking, holy cow, if I had me, a me, like 20 years ago, I would have gotten here so much sooner. And I just didn't have that. I, I just, I was surrounded by like really loving, supportive people, but nobody who had like followed this path that I wanted to follow. Mm-hmm. And so I had to figure out everything on my own. And there are a lot of things that took a long time to figure out, you know, there were a lot of hiccups in the road. So I think that's huge. And I just, Think back to like that 17 year old, you know, and feeling so like stuck or feeling like life is ending. Like my daughter be by far has been my biggest blessing in my life, you know, but at the time it was the most terrifying thing. And I think that even moms who, you know, don't have kids in high school, like just first time moms all feel that to an extent and not really sure how to move on or feeling like, okay, now my path has already been like dictated for me. And it hasn't been like you can create life however you want to. Yeah. And the entrepreneurial journey is different. So (laughs) having someone that's walked that road is, is a real blessing. So I'm going to ask you a kind of weighted towards the end because when you hit six figures, Mm -hmm. what did that mean to you? It was huge for me. So when I was in corporate, I like scraped six figures so many times, right? But I worked salaries. So there wasn't really, it was kind of, I was limited by what they were willing to pay for the position. Mm -hmm. Um, The first time I hit six figures in my business. So I will admittedly say that managing finances is something that took me a long time to learn. And so while I set like goals, I'm not somebody who like is constantly has the pulse on finances. So when I realized it, I actually was like doing taxes (laughs) (laughs) and was like, oh my gosh, we quadrupled our revenue this year from last year. And I had just been working so hard, like head down working that it like, didn't hit me. And it's like, who's excited during tax time? And I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> so it it was a huge, a huge thing. And, and I think especially with kids. So like now my daughter's 21, I have a son who's 15 and, you know, they're at a place where they're looking what they're going to do with their lives. Yeah. And I think like society counts six figures as like this, like unicorn, right? Like this magical number. And I'm like, now I'm like, you guys, like, you can totally hit six figures in your twenties. Like it's, it's, you know what I mean? Like it's the perspective has changed so much. And I think for me, like my goals have shifted too. I think for me, my goals have shifted too. Like I used to have a goal to say like hit six figures, but now I look at freedom as the goal Mm -hmm. and it's like money is just a tool and it comes and it goes. And I still set goals. Of course we have like quarterly sales goals and things like that in my business, but it's not it's not the same it's not the primary focus for me and i think that is just a huge mindset sh- that's just a huge mindset shift that really allows you to be free and align what you're doing with what is most important to you yeah so anything i didn't ask you that you would want to add 
for that mom that's out there, maybe that young mom that's out there listening? Probably just that whatever, it sounds so cliche, and I think 20 years ago I would have rolled my eyes if somebody said this to me, but now I just like believe it and feel it so deeply. Whatever you want to create for your life is yours and you can create it for yourself and for your children. You know, I think as moms, a lot of times we put ourselves last. And so our biggest priority is what we want for our kids and that's okay, but you can make it happen. Like it's not some far off dream. You just have to focus, I think, and really prioritize and stay true to who you are and what you want. And I think we'll close on that. That was powerful. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.